there's there's a lot of cold intro potential. Actually, well, there's not really that much. There's one obvious cold intro thing. Um, on, is and it? that is, well, it's that we have 18 subscribers, Luke. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Notre Dame burning down. Oh, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, okay, there's, there's like three things we could talk about. I think one of them, I mean, we shouldn't really talk about it, but I just think it's worth noting. We've got 18 subscribers, Luke, um, and I think it's definitely true that they all came from me. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. Uh, so there we go. But then the other thing is, uh, yeah, so Notre Dame uh, broke down. And speaking of uh, horrible flaming wreckages, they released the trailer to episode nine. <laughs> what a great segue. Oh, my God. I mean, th- when this comes out, it'll be a few days after. So maybe people have forgotten about it. But yeah, just Star Wars is just absolutely hilarious. I mean, you go from... Oh, also, we should mention that this is late uh, and it's entirely your fault. Yeah, no, just, it is. Oh, that should be noticed. Yeah, uh, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, we forgive you. Yeah, you uh, you go from um, In the Last Jedi, Skywalkers, they don't matter. You know, we're going to break Star Wars, Ryan Johnson with his revolution, and then just straight back to the good old stuff in Episode Nine. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. I mean, it's just... It's so funny. It kind of almost feels slightly petulant, which I love. It's like they're just like... Oh, Ryan Johnson ruined everything. I'm just going to ruin, you know, well, I'm going to put it all back the way it was. And then, you know, it doesn't work. But I, I told you it'd be so funny if like Rose just died in the first five minutes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it always comes back to the classic uh, Resident Evil thing where um, at the end of episode three, they make all of the clones of Mila Djokovic and she gets superpowers. And then at the beginning of uh, the fourth film, she all of the clones die and she gets her superpowers taken away. Because they yeah. didn't know what to do with it. It's classic. Anyway, we'll... back to Resident Evil, but... Yeah, I know. I just can't stop talking about it. Oh, also, Game of Thrones is up. Back up, chump. You know Biggie Small rips it quick. It kicks it quick. You know how black niggas get. With the hoods for teens, with the boots with trees. All the people with the trees make it crazy, jeez. Hitting buck shots at niggas that open spots for the avenue. Take my loot and I'm bagging. <laughs> Pippin' hoes that drive bobos and rodeos Flash the roll, make a wreck in they pantyhose Damn, a nigga style is a north of Doc's grip the clock When I walk down the crowded block Just in case a nigga wanna act out I just black out, blow the motherfucking back out That's a real nigga for you. Hello and welcome to Select from Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that come out relatively recently at the cinema and see if they still hold up upon a second watch. I'm your host, Michael, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Luke. And this week, we are looking forward to something happening next week, or is it even the week after next, which is the release of Avengers Endgame. Um, and of course, we will be looking at Infinity War next week. But just, just as a little run-up, we'd like to have, uh, what do we call it, Luke? Mark Prull? That is correct. Yes, yeah, April because they don't release them in March, which would work so much better. March of all, but no. Um, so in in the run up in April, we're looking at the two Captain America films, Captain America, uh, the first Avenger, and Captain America: Winter Soldier. And why don't you start us off, Luke, by telling us a thing or two about Captain America: The First Soldier, and then sure we'll look thing, at the Winter Michael. Avenger. Mm-hmm. So Captain America: The First Avenger is a 2011 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character Captain America. It's produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Paramount Pictures. Don't know why I needed to say that, but there you go, some useful yeah. information. It is the fifth film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was directed by Joe Johnson. Uh, it was produced by Kevin Feig and stars Chris Evans, Tommy Lee Jones, Hugo Weaving, Haley Atwell, Sebastian Stan, Dominic Cooper, Neil McDonough, Derek Luke, and Stanley Tucci. Derek Luke? That's, y- that's you. Yeah. Uh, what a what a great name, Derek Luke. Uh, release date July the twenty second, twenty eleven. And Michael, have a guess at the budget. I'm gonna guess a lot. Uh, I don't know. I, I just want to go for. I'm gonna go for the low hundreds. I want to go for a hundred and. Well, I'll go for the middle of the low hundreds. Hundred and twenty five million. Yeah, good guess. Uh, hundred and forty million. Okay, not bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they spent probably about eighty million on marketing because it says one hundred forty to two hundred sixteen point seven. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, so, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, box office now? Uh, a lot. Ugh, I don't know. Like, um, over 500 million, let's say. But, I mean, obviously not a billion. So, uh, let's go for 700 million. <sighs> Michael, Michael, Michael. Recency bias. Recency oh, so bias. So, it made less. That's what it made, made a lot less. Significantly less. It made yeah. 400 million. Made about half of what you said. What do you say? I said 700 million, so it made 350 million. Yeah, wow. 370 million. 
Oh, wow. That's, yeah, uh... see, this is the thing. Like, back in the day, I, I remember like, when Captain America came out back in 2011. Like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it wasn't really a thing. It was only with the Avengers. Like, it really got kick-started. Like, people became kind of obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if this movie was released, like, now in 2019 or even in the past few years it would have grossed like double but yeah this was before the mcu really took off yeah yeah that makes sense uh, okay well there we go there's an interesting fact uh, but the most important fact is we are at this point aren't we did you enjoy this film luke you know what michael i kind of did uh i i agree yeah i mean i can't say i hated it uh, but i also can't say i was that enthralled of it i mean to be honest i felt about it exactly how i could have guessed i would feel about it uh, based on my very distant first viewing of it um, yeah, it's it, still it's, better than Aquaman. Yes, uh, and I can confirm. I can confirm that it's definitely better than Aquaman. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit. I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll discuss what it is a bit, won't we? So first things first. Do you have any nitpicks? Uh, yes, I do, Michael. How many do I have? I'll I have, tell you, I, I have four. Just I have one, around. two, three, four, five. Okay, so I get to go first because I've got slightly less. Yeah. Uh, so some of these aren't great. Some of these are fine. Um, first of all, when Captain America infiltrates the the camp. Um, I thought it's very obvious he should have stolen the guard's armor, you know, because uh, so so he he goes. It's when he's going to rescue his friends uh, or all the sorry the soldiers behind enemy lines, and he's knocking out all these guards, and then he's running around. Um, and the thing is, the the armor they're wearing disguises your face, and I'm just thinking, come on, Cappy. Yeah, I mean, it's just such an obvious thing to do. He wouldn't even have to like he's sneaking around. I'm thinking, you know, you wouldn't have to sneak around if uh if you wore that armor, especially seeing as everyone seems to speak English anyway. Maybe so, he doesn't. Oh, like- how's it? How's it going, sir? Maybe he doesn't want to dress as a Nazi. Maybe he thinks it's problematic. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Damn SJWs ruining everything. Uh, this is another one. It's a general one. I just have to say this. Uh, it's, a, it's a little no- a public service announcement to villains of the world. Just because you hear a noise, it doesn't mean you can't pull the trigger. Of course, uh, Red Skull, he's got a gun right to Captain America's head. He, he hears a noise, and suddenly it's like he, he just has to sa- stand there and look with his finger on the, figure, just, uh, on the trigger, just looking, being like, oh, What's happening out there? And I just think, you know, you just... I mean, that's the thing. Like, I guess this is more more a message to villains of the future. If you hear a noise, you can just just remember. Just kill the, the hero. Because if he would have killed Captain America just then, boom. Yeah. Genius. Um, uh, I mean, you know, he, it wasn't the 1940s, you know. It's before, you know, before villains really took off. And, yeah, that's know, true. Yeah, yeah, there weren't any, really any villains in the 1940s, were there? <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah. so the fourth or uh, third one, uh, this one's... Uh, and a bit of an editing one, but not like a proper editing one. So basically, when Captain America is running, I just did a little running mine, to uh, to catch the plane, which obviously Red Skull's on, uh, you see him swinging over all of these soldiers shooting at him. And then in a cut, suddenly, he's you know running along a runway. There's nobody around him anymore, and all the soldiers are behind him. And I'm thinking to myself, surely at one point, there would have had to have been a moment where he kind of had just finished jumping over the soldiers, and he could be running away, and the soldiers would be very close to him, and he'd be running in a straight line with no cover, and at that point he'd die. So basically, with a bit of sneaky editing, they just made you forget that moment happened. We had him jumping over the soldiers, you know, running in between them, and then next cut, he's already got 50 meters between them and him. But, I mean, at the end of the day, he should have got shot in the back and killed, because there's no way you can, you know... I mean, he's Captain America, but you can't avoid, um... What's it called? What are they called? Uh, guns, that's it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what they're called, yeah. And final one, uh, just, I think, playing the baseball match from the wrong period... Was just a pretty obvious and avoidable error. I oh think, yeah, you know. I, that's that's one of mine. That really. I thought I thought it. Yeah, I thought it would be one of yours. When, as I was reading, I was thinking, I bet Luke had this because it's just an obvious one. But um, oh, it's so obvious. My oh, 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 sorry. No, I'm just saying it's. I'm sure your other four are very obscure. So let's hear them. Uh, okay. Yeah. So first one. Uh, it was right at the start when he's in his training camp. Has nobody seriously ever tried to pull the flag down like that before? Mm-hmm. Um, you know when he takes the uh, yeah. bottom bit out and it just falls on the floor like. Yeah. The guy said, oh, it's in 17 years nobody's taken down this flag. And I'm like, really? Nobody's ever tried that? Yeah, I, I was thinking it's not even like it's that hard. Have you ever seen, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a pretty obvious thing to do because the, the, the peg's right there. Um, have you ever seen Mulan where um, she climbs the pole? Uh, female empowerment, I guess. No, she climbs, uh, climbs the, the pole to get the whatever it is, get the arrow, and it's playing that song. Basically, that's what you should have done. That's what I was thinking. Of. I mean, to be honest, though, Another point, why couldn't they climb the pole? Because, you know, okay, I, I would assume, like, I mean, I can I can lift my body weight, and I, I've never really tried to climb a rope, but I would assume that if you're in the army, then one of the things you can probably do is climb a rope. And I would think climbing a flagpole 
it's basically just a rope but without the moving around part. So unless they greased it up, um, I'm not really sure why they can climb it. So there we, there we go. That's a nitpick within a nitpick. Okay. Uh, next Inception. one. <laughs> uh, it's when uh, Steve Rogers is getting his steroids. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Jesus, my throat. Um, oh, no, we're not going to be able to do the podcast now. Oh, my God. I need a drink of water. Quick, yeah, Michael. See. Say something entertaining. Uh, okay, so basically, the uh, Steve Rogers, right, when he's um, doing the... I can't even remember what you were in the middle of talking about. Oh, yeah, he was getting <laughs> the steroids, right? So when he was getting the steroids, um, why did they need so many different little things to inject him with? Why couldn't they have just had one needle per area? Is that what you were going to say, Luke? Um, no, but it's close. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, but why did they only leave like one bit of serum left for this Hydra guy to take? Like, how convenient for him. Oh, yeah. And also, and also why did he have to explode everything? He could have just, like, s- snuck out, you know? Oh, yeah. You know what, Luke? You're completely completely right on that one, yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't have got caught, you know? He could have fucking given it back to his Nazi guys, but no, he had to be a fucking idiot and blow everything up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, next one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this one is... Uh, yeah, it has a big impact on the plot, <clears throat> but I've got it here anyway. Uh, of all yeah. the soldiers that Zola, that's the evil doctor, experimented yeah. on, he just had to pick out Bucky, didn't he? Just had to be Captain America's best friend. Well, maybe the Force told him to do it. Yeah, probably. That's like, whenever there's a coincidence, it's the Force. Yeah, uh, next one is the baseball game. Yes, yeah, got you. Unbelievably stupid. Um, also, at the end of the movie, like <laughs> Captain America, he's hurtling towards the ice. And yes, he's like he's he's talking to what you call Peggy Carter, and he's, you know, he's kind of resigned to death. And I'm just like, can you not like just jump out of the plane, you know, like try to yeah. survive? He just like gives up. He's just like, yeah, no, I'm gonna die. Well, well, also I heard that if if you are ever falling from a plane, like free falling from a plane, the best and this makes sense, the best place you could possibly land would be on the snow, um, which yeah. would actually be safer than landing on in water. As we know, if you land in water from a certain distance, it's actually very dodgy, basically like hitting concrete. Uh, and that, that's relevant because, of course, I don't know if it's in this film, I think it's in the other film, um, Captain America jumps out of a plane into some water. So, you know, and he survives. So if you can jump out of a plane into w- water, you can jump out of a plane into snow. Yeah. So, yeah, no excuses, Captain. Captain. Yeah, so uh, that's it. That's my nitpicks. All right, and then we move on to the the plot so I, I don't think you've explained the plot actually luke no i haven't no so that's fine though you don't always to be honest i sometimes think that just before we discuss the plot it might be a good time for you to explain the plot yeah maybe uh so this movie captain america the first avenger is set predominantly during world war ii the film tells the story of steve rogers a sickly man from brooklyn who is transformed into the super soldier of captain america and must stop the red skull who intends to use an artifact called the Tesseract as an energy source for world domination. You know, just before I thought uh, it said Red Bull. <laughs> that, funny. that would be good. Yeah. Uh, it would be a bit like uh, the Rocketeer, except instead of rockets, it would be Red Bull giving you wings. I mean, you know, Red Bull isn't popular in Germany. Uh, or at least uh, RB Leipzig isn't popular. That's a football team. Uh, oh. Yeah, he used Red Bull sponsorship and... Other German football teams and fans think they're, you know, it's just, it's basically a corporate, like, club. And obviously Germany, their football has a uh, history of, like, working class support and all of that. And then these yeah. guys come in with that Red Bull sponsorship and their badge, which just looks exactly like the Red Bull logo. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe Steve mm-hmm. Rogers could uh, actually do, go and do some stuff at RB Leipzig. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, maybe he could treat, uh, treat, corporate football on the same level as nazism i think that would be uh, i mean you know they always say that the problem with marvel is that the villains just aren't good enough and i think uh in fact actually you know what it'd be like about the simpsons episode where homer goes on hunger strike because the uh football team's moving to albuquerque (laughs) yeah exactly Uh, Uh, anyway plot yeah Uh, well i just explained what the plot is so now we go on to what did we think about the plot yeah first avenger do you want to start us off michael yeah i was thinking about um let's say talking about the things I liked first and then talking about the things I disliked. I don't really know how just, um, so the first thing I, I want to say that I like got it in no particular order, but the first thing I like is, is this idea of, um, Captain America and his kind of his, his powers and what he is. Cause basically Captain America, it's a very, it's a very simple character because it's basically just a human being, but better. Um, which I kind of <laughs> like because all these other things that's, you know, like, Oh, they can fly, um or they can create spiders or i mean thor what's that he's got like a, a hammer and he can throw the hammer and fly to places 
and also no one else can lift up the hammer. It's just like, I mean, come on, why don't you just have a guy? And basically the only thing is, oh, he's just, so some people, they're, they're pretty strong. He's stronger. Some people, they're pretty fast. He's faster. Some people, they're pretty smart. He's smarter. I like that. I like that basically it's just take every single normal thing that like a regular, pretty decent human would be able to do. And then he's just slightly better than that. There's no messing around. I like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here's the thing about Captain America, I guess. There's a, there's a problem with him. Um, in relation to his origin story. Because often origin stories, obviously the best origin stories, are ones where the hero becomes a, um, well, becomes a hero. So he's got the powers, but then he transitions into a hero. Uh, obviously the best example of this is Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. 2000, uh, 2002 film directed by Sam Raimi. Spider-Man goes to this wrestling club. Well, it's not a club, I guess. Whatever yeah, it is. I don't know what it is. Arena? Yeah. yeah, Arena, whatever. And he tries to win some money uh, by using his powers, and he does, but then he transitions into. Well, hold on a minute. Let me just remind you that the the uh, the ad said a thousand dollars for uh for three rounds, and you've knocked him out in two. So for that, I give you three hundred dollars. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good memory, that Michael. I know. <laughs> I've seen the film too many times. Yeah, so that's the classic okay. example. Uh, yeah, obviously here origin movie, but this is the other way around. It's like he gets his powers because he's a hero. And yeah. So you can't do a typical superhero origin story. You can't have him grow. So that immediately limits what you can do with the character. Y- yeah. Okay. So that's actually kind of relevant to something I've got written down, which is um, I was thinking to myself, there's there's two different mentalities you can have regarding superpowers. Uh, as you know, in the Jurassic Park book uh, by Michael Crichton, there's a bit where uh, Jeff Goldblum, even though he's not played by Jeff Goldblum at that point, says the uh the the thing about you know there's a, a difference between a, a martial artist and a scientist he's kind of contrasting a martial artist with the scientist and he's saying well the martial artist you know he he can only do what he learns to do so you know everything he does he he learns by training by studying by building himself up and therefore he has an appreciation for the importance of that power and the, the significance of that power whereas scientists you know they just as, as he says in the film, they stand on the shoulders of giants and they're able to do all of these things that they didn't necessarily have to work to, to get that knowledge. And I found it interesting that this film in many ways is more like, you know, it's a guy who's basically just handed loads of power. Um, but instead of it being like, oh, he's handed loads of power so he doesn't know how to appreciate it. It's like the, the argument of the film, I guess, is that because, like you say, because he's weak at the time, it shows that he's a, a, a good spirited guy to begin with. And it's like, oh, the spirit's better than a... Than physical strength, and in a sense, I did. I liked that. Uh, and the only reason I bring up that contrast is because I was thinking about that. I was thinking, like, oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah. This is an interesting, different approach. Yeah, um, it's kind of weird though because you have to think like I don't know. I mean, did they ever explain why he was so skinny? Because uh, I would think, can't you just you know? I mean, I guess it's just because they didn't. I was going to say, can't you just eat lots of food? But I guess you know, maybe back in those days, that was easier <laughs> said than done. Yeah, I don't know. Like he's got a lot of diseases. Uh, he's yeah. described as sick. <laughs> he's got he's got asthma. Imagine having asthma. Imagine how just pathetic your life would be. And when he goes to the doctor, it's like that Mr. Burns scene in The Simpsons. <laughs> we call it Free Stooges Syndrome. You have so many diseases that they can't get through the door. Um, yeah, that is what it's... So what you're saying is, I'm invincible. No, even a small breeze could... Uh, invincible. Yeah, so that's uh, essentially Steve Rogers. Uh, yeah, we just established yeah. that. But yeah, so in, in this movie, like obviously it's not your traditional origin story, but I did like... The direction it was going um i think what, what obviously what they did uh with him being used for propaganda purposes it's quite an interesting turn of events and i i did like that i did enjoy it because obviously that's not something you see in uh, any other superhero movie you know i yeah. can't think of anything like that that i've seen before um so yeah only thing about that there is a shot like a soldier reading a captain america comic <laughs> and like he's helping to motivate the troops, but then all the troops just like him. Uh, but yeah, that yeah. it was really interesting, and I thought what maybe really... maybe the soldier who was reading it was like a new recruit who hadn't been hardened, whereas the troops didn't dislike him. They were you know more angry because yeah. they were more hardened. Yeah, maybe. Um, if I ever saw Chris Evans, I'd be hardened. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the thing this is the thing. I think with this movie, it would have been really interesting to see him try to uh, try to win the respect of the troops by going behind enemy, enemy lines like he does but that would be like the, kind of the climax of the movie instead mm. of it happening like mm. halfway through because like when he rescues the troops and he and he's you know he's cheered and everyone likes him it does kind of feel like the finale of the movie but we're only 75 minutes in like he's conquered his obstacles and that's what a superhero 
and particularly an origin story, should be about like he's already the hero. He's already uh, at this stage the guy who everybody loves. He's already Captain America. Um, what that should happen near the well, near the end of the movie. We have got another forty minutes to go. Um, so yeah, what do you think about? Well, did did you hear that that noise I made? It was like. Uh-uh. Uh, oh, that was no. me. That, okay, well, that, no, that was me agreeing with you actually. Oh. Uh, it, was, it wasn't. It wasn't a very clear agreeing noise. So I was wondering yeah. if, but yeah. Uh, that so it was kind of like a. It was like a. Mm, like oh, I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But it was like mm-hmm, which kind of sounds a bit. It's when you put it together. It was like a, mm, I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, okay. So like what I wanted to say, uh, and it's one of the reasons why I was kind of because like I said, I was going to talk about all the things I really liked and all the things I was kind of going to dislike, and I was going to end with that propaganda point because I was going to say I really liked that. But yeah, my good. problem was, but my problem was that it should have been uh, in a way like the focus of the film. And I completely agree with you that yeah. that should have been the way it ended. So I was thinking to myself, I mean, this is going to become a recurring theme and it's probably a, a theme I should have brought up back when we spoke about Marvel before. But to me, one of my problems with a lot of Marvel films is that they don't feel like my idea of a, a superhero film. Cause my idea of a superhero film is like, it's the, the disconnect between the man and the, and the superhero. So obviously with Spider-Man, it's, you know, the disconnect between Peter Parker and, and, spider-man and the way that peter parker's life interfaces with um spider-man's life so obviously spider-man's a hero but then peter parker oh he's a bit of a nerd so he's going to get with uh with mary jane it's kind of that's what keeps you invested because obviously you know spider-man's invincible but um peter parker you know what about his emotions what about his relationship what about his uh, things like that um obviously there's loads of things like batman he's got all of his things going on superman but with a lot of the marvel films it's kind of like it's just the superhero i mean when was the last time that you saw like um I don't know, Thor, try and get a date. I mean, it probably did happen, but you know, uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, so like, but if you have, for example, like you say that the plot was basically Captain America becomes uh, a, a symbol a prop- for the propaganda and you could, you know, not just have a montage for it, which is almost what they have. I mean, they have a montage of all going well, but make that kind of like, yeah, like a big part of the film. Yeah, extend um, that out. Yeah, stretch it out and basically make that the plot. And you could even have, you know, some kind of, I mean, maybe... Uh, a villainous person is involved in that like i don't know somebody's uh maybe a bit dodgy you could have for example uh you know how it used to be that a lot of uh papers in the west were very pro-hitler and then they pretended that they weren't later on uh you have one of those? yeah i think they have like yeah i think there was one in america like quite a big one in america that also was but i can't remember what it was it might have been like the new york times i think that's kind of a Jesus. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe the New York. So there's like a bad one in New York. Yeah, like it's, it's the New York Post. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I think it could be the New York Post. Yeah. Yeah, those um, have been, uh, that's the paper that's been targeting Ilan Omar this week. Yeah. So, yeah. But a- anyway, so yeah. So basically, they could have had a thing where it's like, hold a minute. You know, the, these guys, they're, they're dodgy or alternatively. I mean, you didn't, didn't have to do that. But uh, definitely, like I say, I agree with you that it should have been, he decided, you know, uh, I'm going to be uh, the hero and I'm going to save the day in the end uh, to prove that i am in fact um captain that no, i am a hero yeah uh, uh i don't yeah. really think that a villain in this movie was needed yeah i kind of agree with that actually i mean obviously there's a subtext which is there is already a villain given the context of it yeah being Hitler, Hitler. obviously he's fighting yes. the nazis they are yeah. the bad guys yes exactly um i mean we'll maybe we'll talk about a villain a bit later because i want to just stick with a few more of the things I liked just for a moment. Yeah, sure. This one's a very small one. I probably should have started this started with this one, but I didn't. Um, which is I liked just a very small thing that they started with the excavation. I thought that was kind of like a, a fun little introduction because it was like, oh, this is this is where we end. How do we get here? Yeah. Right, yeah. I like to say not a big thing. Uh and then the actual other So okay, yeah, the only other positive I have, um, it's a very small thing, again, actually. So again, I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. I really should have organized better and got my small positives out of the way first. It was just the, uh, I liked the Howard Stark interconnection. I mean, in general, like with the Marvel interconnection stuff, a lot of the time it's just sort of confusing um, and hard to get your head around. But it was just like a small thing. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's Mr. Stark, um, Tony's dad. Good. Well done. Yeah, it was like, well done. I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm not always a massive fan of all of these people knowing each other. It just messes with my head a bit. But sometimes you get a little small thing and I'm like, cute. It's kind of like Quentin Tarantino levels, where it's like, oh, a little hint that they're in the shared universe. Uh, uh, anyway, you know, have you ever heard all those theories? Yeah, no, I know the theories. Yes, you know, like those. I think I might make a, a fan theory. Theory: all the Marvel films share the same universe. <laughs> uh, anyway, so now I think I can. Oh wait, no, I had one other really good thing. Uh, Captain America discovering he's in New York at the end. 
uh, it was just really cool. Um, just yeah, it was like, nice. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, like you say, there was an initial pretense for it. It was really stupid. But it's kind of like, I don't know, that idea of like, I was thinking about it, like that idea of just suddenly waking up in like the present day. I always think about that. Like, I always think about like, if you just took somebody from, you know, uh, the Middle Ages, like kind of a time that's like not massively in the past, but, you know, you know not like caveman times, but, you oh, know. pretty massively in the past. I know, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty massively in the past. But like, yeah, so to a point where they wouldn't have even, you know, known about like houses they didn't have those back in medieval times. No. Uh, so, and, and they'd come here and just like, I mean, just imagine how cool it would be. I want to see that. I want to see medieval man um, come into the part, into the future. And he's just like, just amazed by everything. But yeah, so obviously. I'm going yeah, in a weird direction here. The idea of somebody from the 1940s just being immediately transported into the future is just very fun. Um, and I just thought that idea was very interesting. And apart from that, we can now, I think now I can say, Actually, one more thing, uh, kind of related to propaganda. Eh, not really, uh, but related to what you said about how this film doesn't really need a villain. Um, we're just about to go into the villain stuff, but I also wanted to say one of the things I wanted is for this film to feel more like, uh, m- kind of more like a war film. Because I mean, here's the problem with this: it feels a lot just like a spy film. Um, because, like, basically, I mean, this this a lot of this film could just happen at any time. Like when he's going behind enemy lines and he's kind of breaking through, he's taking out all of these guards and stuff and things like that. That could literally just be happening um, in the 21st century. Yeah, but I... I, I, Yeah. I I, I, disagree. Okay, I didn't realize you hated me. Yeah, no, I... just a podcast if you disagree with me, Luke. (laughs) I do like how this movie is based in World War II, and I think it does it well. Like I genuinely did feel like it was in World War II, and I think especially... Because well, we both mentioned we like the propaganda stuff that happened in World War Two, or obviously it didn't happen specifically to Cap- uh, Captain America, but there was propaganda ele- uh, stuff that happened, uh, like what Captain America was doing in the Second World War. So yeah, I, and generally I do like superhero stories that are based in non-fiction stuff in history, like uh, Hannah Wonder Woman was based in World War One. World War One, yeah. It does. I think it ma- makes it feel more real, uh, you know. And yeah, I. I do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I basically what I'm saying is I wanted like to just see Omaha Beach happen. You know, I wanted I, I wanted them to just shove in a Saving Private Ryan. I just have a scene where I know. Okay, so basically, I think what I really want was kind of like a scene to show the uh, destruction of this war in a way to kind of because it's sort of like the only real example of actual soldiers we see uh, in anything close to action. They're not really actually in action. They're basically just. Um, well, apart from, I guess at the end they like storm the place, but even then you don't really see it. But like the main thing is when it's like um, they go when he goes into the facility and he breaks them all out. But there's not really a scene of like um, showing the actual suffering of war and and how horrible the war was. It's kind of just like the war is a, a, just a pretense for yeah, but that's Captain not, America's that's flippy. Not the point though, is it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a major thing. I, it's definitely not a major thing. I'm just saying I would have a. Uh, I think it would have solved me a bit because, and this is why, I mean, I relate it back to that. You said, obviously, the Nazis are, are big enough villains. I think, in a way, if, if you're going to have, I think that would be a good idea. Basically, the idea that the villain is the, you know, uh, Nazi Germany, then I think by having more stuff that kind of hinges on the actual battle between America and Germany, uh, rather than, you know, this kind of more personal battle between Captain America and Red Skull, uh, then I think it would help if you had a, you know, few shots of platoons being blowed up or something like that. But this leads on to the more fundamental point, which is, of course, the fact that the villain isn't really Hitler, is it, Luke? The villain is, well, the villain organization is Hydra. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got a question about Hydra, first of all. Before we'll talk about Red Skull particularly, in particular, but I think we should kind of, it's worth separating Hydra from Red Skull because Hydra kind of comes back. Hydra's like the, the enduring villain. And we'll talk about this a bit of Winter Soldier, but they say cut off one head and two shall take its place, and that's like the whole thing. But here's my question, Luke. Why? Like, because like that they've kind of defined themselves around this idea with Hydra. But you think, what's their recruiting strategy? I mean, you know, like you would think if you're gonna have that that saying, you know, cut off one head and two shall take its place. I mean, that would make sense, say, for example, for uh early Christianity, you know. You you kill somebody, it creates a martyr, and therefore, you know, more people take its place. That kind of works. So you know, you kill somebody, they become a martyr, more or even you know, radical Islam. Like if there was, for example, um, obviously Tony Stark uh, fights the terrorists in a, in a lot of his films, or at least the first film, and the second film. Oh, sorry, first film and the third film fights the terrorists, and obviously you know terrorism. A lot of that's about martyrdom. So you could say, well, if you kill me, 
two will take my place because I'll be a martyr. That makes sense. But Hydra doesn't have that. So basically what I'm saying is Hydra's slogan just doesn't work for the organization. Really, if they're going to have a slogan, it should be obey us or we'll just fucking kill you. Yeah, well, what is that based on, though? It's uh, Isn't it like an ancient Greek mythology yeah, thing? It's based on the uh, the Disney film Hercules. Uh, Hercules where he, it's based on. Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's based, it's, it's based on... Um, Hercules, uh, sorry, yeah, the Hydra which Hercules fights, and uh, do you know how he defeats it in the end, Luke? Uh, no, how does he defeat it? Does uh, he burn it? Yes, yeah, so he, when he cuts off its uh, neck, he, or sorry, when he cuts off its head, he burns the, uh, he cauterizes the uh, the wound, and therefore it can't burn back. And of oh, course, that's so very relevant. Well good in ancient Greece. And uh, as they say, Luke, um, that's why Red Skull, his head is burned. Yeah, but like, okay, the it's just a bunch of Nazis who you know, kind of the alt-right thing is like, oh, we love Western culture. Like, we love the ancient Greeks. So they're just co-opting that, you know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but, I mean, that's the thing, though, Luke. I mean, the, the other thing, I mean, this is the main thing I want to talk about of Hydra, is they're not they're not actually necessarily presented that or associated, at least, as much with Nazism as they could be, because, of course, um, Red Skull, they're, they're, they're a part of a Nazi science division, but then Red Skull basically says, um, you know, oh, we've gone as far as we can under under Hitler. Um, therefore, we need to break away and kind of form our own thing. And that, I think, points back to the point, obviously, you were saying, wouldn't it be great if they were just fighting Nazis? Um, and even and obviously, this is part of the quote unquote Nazi science division. But then at the same time, they sort of move away from that. Um, and you actually don't really. I don't think. I mean, is there, I'm just trying to think because you find out more about it in the second film. In this film, do you get a very good idea of what exactly Hydra's motivation is apart from just to you know conquer the world oh that's it it's just to yeah. conquer the world and obviously oh, he's good. a nazi so you can assume that he's got the same tendencies as hitler but that's not really spelled out like if he's probably anti-semitic but it's never shown i guess maybe marvel didn't want to go down that path but yeah he's just a he's he's a bit one-dimensional yeah uh, i mean this, this is a he is a uh, notoriously um i mean yeah he's definitely up there as far as terrible marvel villains go i mean i don't know i yeah. guess probably thor the dark world it's not he's, great he's well, to be honest, I'll, yeah i mean that's the thing there just aren't that many uh i guess obviously you've also got the fact that he is basically just a, a mirror if you like of captain america so obviously he's he's got the super soldier serum but it mm-hmm. burnt his I, I also don't really understand how how it did that thing to its, his face i mean that does i mean that's a bit confusing isn't it like how can a how can a serum it's a superhero movie michael i mean because the thing is i mean here's a fun fact do you know that the green goblin um it's not his origin <laughs> no but do you remember uh, the green goblin in the amazing spider-man 2 <laughs> and how awful he looked anyway oh, yeah um <laughs> but, but, so, the, the green goblin actually he, the, the his origin is that because obviously it's a it's a shared universe in the comics uh, although obviously spider-man doesn't and never will share a universe with the avengers that would work if this was uh, several years ago yeah um but yeah so it, the green goblin the, his actual origin in the comics is that it, he was attempting to remake the super soldier serum uh, and obviously he didn't do it properly and he went crazy and the rest is history but um there's a fun fact so apparently lots of people get their, their hands on this super soldier serum and have a variety of negative effects but captain america is the only one who um can't it just occurred to me you know how they say like oh it it, it um amplifies whatever's in somebody so that's what the super soldier serum does so if you're a really yeah. good person maybe really good maybe uh red skull just had a bit of a sunburn that day <laughs> and that's why they amplified it maybe. anyway yeah. Uh, yeah but also on the note of red skull i feel like the only reason we're watching these two films is just to just so we kn- knew who the heck was guarding the soul stone when we do uh infinity war yeah uh, so, i only I... knew who he was i recognized him i mean i got <laughs> no yeah i, I would have known who he was too yeah. but he was definitely very forgettable uh yeah so i think well, I just want to say... In the- yes, exactly. I wanted to hear what you had to say. Yeah. Well, when uh, I yes. said I think, I wasn't saying I was going to end. I was just going to say I was going to let you talk. All uh, right, thanks. Uh, yeah, well, basically, we, we discussed... Uh, I, I don't think I need to add too much more. There's no villain needed in this movie. Like, we've already got... He's fighting the Nazis already. Like, they're just the perfect bad guys. You know, every other villain, or in most, like, fantasy movies, is just, like, the Nazis, but different branding. So, you know, you've got the real deal here. You don't need to fight Hydra. You can just fight the Nazis. Uh, and also, like, the reason why um, Rogers, at the end, wants to kill Red Skull is because he, he has a revenge thing as well, which is always just so boring. Oh, Bucky, Bucky. Yeah, oh, Bucky's dead. Oh, no. Yeah. It's like, well, you were going to try and kill him anyway, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So yeah. Uh, also, uh, I mean, to be honest, Red Skull didn't even really kill Bucky, did he? It was mostly mostly Zola who killed yeah, Bucky. Yeah, no, Zola. So yeah, was yeah. he? Was he so mad? So yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. maybe. I don't know, maybe like maybe having rescue all the soldiers at like one hour thirty minutes because I, I guess you have yeah. to have a final battle. No, yeah, I agree. The ice, so you have to like, but just push it, just stretch it a bit more. So yeah, and you don't yeah. need to have the Red Skull, and it, this could have been a really good movie. It could have been a real good story about Captain America earning the respect of the soldiers. In, uh, yeah, yeah. You could have had, I mean, you could have had a, a fantastic three act structure. So it could be first act is obviously sets up his origin. The second act deals with the kind of um, the propaganda stuff and culminates in him kind of having a bit of an existential crisis over or crisis because it would just be one uh, over whether or not um, you. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. An existential crisis over whether or not it's like really his true purpose or whether or not it's really worth doing, kind of the standard stuff. And then obviously yeah. it culminates in the third act where he does actually. And I guess in the second act you could also have maybe. I mean, they could. I think they should have like a personal villain. Like maybe. I mean, obviously you could do the um, what's it called? Inglorious Bastard thing. Get mm-hmm. uh, Chris Christopher Waltz in there, uh, and he's kind of like so. Colonel Hans Lander is the uh, the an equivalent to that. So he's kind of got somebody who's really evil that he can kill because obviously you can't really end up it killing with him killing Hitler or something because that would be silly. Because Hitler didn't die, but you know, have just a, a generic uh, Nazi colonel, and obviously maybe in the second act you could have him do something really horrible, so we already hate him, and then Captain America hears about it, and he's like, I've got to save the day, and then he goes off and saves the day. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. And yeah. throw in Omaha Beach in there. Throw in, just just paste in the, the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. I don't mind. It's a good scene. I'd be happy to just, mm. just copy and paste it in there, Luke. Just copy and paste it right in there. Um, final thing, I said I was well, going to mention say, actually, second. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, you, you brought up a point before, like he, the existential crisis thing. And I was expecting this in the movie and it didn't come up. There's not like a scene in which he's just saying to somebody or maybe himself, like, what am I doing, man? What am I doing? Like, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So he gets bombarded with stuff by the He's soldiers. very self-assured. Is yeah. kind of problem. He's always just like, well, I, I don't want to kill nobody. I just want to fat bullies. I know he doesn't sound like that because he's from he's Brooklyn. It's literally the exact opposite of whatever that accent was. Hey, hey, Vinny, I want to go fight some uh, some bullies. Hey. <laughs> yeah, You're so, all my pals, my pals are the toughest. Like when he was talking to Peggy Carter, that's why I expected like him to just be like, I don't know what I'm doing here, man. I signed up to fight. I thought I was gonna, you know, kill some Nazis, but you know, I'm just dancing around in this stupid outfit. But there isn't anything like that. He doesn't have that self uh, reflection, which you know is a is a big miss and could have really helped his yeah. uh, his arc. Well, I mean, to be honest, like I'm just gonna say it right now, the whole thing of him and Bucky is kind of gay. Okay, well, we'll get that in the relationship. Not really, yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just gonna say, uh, no, the fact, like, literally, the fact that almost everything that he does seems to be centered around, like, that's the thing. Like, if, if, um, if Captain America was a woman and Bucky was a man, uh, if then people would say that this film was like the most impossibly sexist thing ever. Because literally, I mean, you know, you know how in like um, Twilight, everything Bella does is just motivated by uh, Edward. Basically, yeah. Chris Evans or Captain America is Bella. And Bucky is Edward, and everything Captain America does is just centered around this guy he obviously has a crush on. Um, actually, you know what? That'd be good if he was gay. Representation. I feel like I've said that before for another. I feel like I've said every that. review. Yeah. <laughs> Call me by your name. Yeah. Call me by your name is the only thing I was like. Wouldn't it be better if they were straight? Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, yeah. But speaking of um, Captain America being gay, I just wanted to say that I couldn't. I mean, I wasn't. I just didn't feel the romance at all. I mean, there's literally nothing to say apart from like. I mean, I, I understood it was there. I could tell what was happening, but just I just before was... we get onto that, Michael, just before oh, yeah. we get, because I th- I feel like we I I didn't tell you this because I'm an idiot, but I got like a relationship section, and that's oh, Bucky yeah. and Agent Carter. Uh, so just a a couple more things on the plot. I just want to know what you think about this because I always think in superhero movies or superhero origin movies, the first scene where he uses his powers, it's like a staple of every superhero origin movie. How do you think he was in this? Because I thought it was okay. In, in Spider Man, it's like go web go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In so, this movie, it was okay. I think it would have been good though if he was like more surprised and he was like faster and stronger. Uh, they didn't really yeah. convey that well. He kind of. I mean, it also kind of just came right out of the gate. There was like no moment of him. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in in some ways, I almost feel like you know how in the oh, end end credits, what's it called, the post credit scene, uh, he does that thing where he's beating up that uh, what's it called, uh, punching bag. Yeah. And uh, I almost think that would make more sense. Like you know, immediately after he's discovered his powers, he's like, oh, you know. I've discovered my powers. I'm guessing I'm going to go test how strong I am. And maybe you just have a scene of him going to like an old timey gym and he's just like trashing everything because he's too strong. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, so it, it does kind of just jump into the action. So it's kind of like, just like, oh, I guess he can do all of these things now. Um, yeah. It could have been better, basically. Yeah. Better. I think, oh, here's an idea. What if, you know, that uh, scene in Terminator 2 where they're chasing the um, 
the car and it's playing a dun 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 they should have pasted that onto the uh, bit where Captain America's chasing the car <laughs> and then they could have you know, remember in the Simpsons where they parody I was like faster Neddy I can it's a geo great <laughs> Classic. Anyway, so uh, relationships. Mm-hmm. Relationships. So uh, you, you can have the floor. So right. This is right. your section. Okay. Well, I mean, you were talking about Bucky as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but seeing as you, it's I didn't have a section for it. Oh right. I, mean, I did. Yeah. I had a section for romance. Yeah. Just to be honest, it kind of is a romance. <laughs> yeah. So good old Bucky. Yeah. Uh, this is the issue with Bucky. Like his death seems so uh, so quick. Like the scene, it just lasts two minutes, and he's just dead. I think yeah. if you're going to rely so much on this relationship in this movie, uh, in this movie and the coming movies, you need to just strengthen that a bit more because he's not really in that many scenes as Bucky. Uh, and there's like, I don't know, I, I think there needs to be a better backstory than them just walking around a fucking world fair together. Like, I'd have flashbacks or something, I don't know. Anyway, like, it happens in such a fast-paced way. Like, th- there's a yeah. montage and then it's like, oh, he's dead. And it's like, oh, that happened then. And I yeah. think actually this whole movie is too fast paced. Like, yeah, I agree. It is a really interesting story there. And like with the montage and, you know, them not really developing the propaganda thing and developing him trying to overcome the obstacle of being respected by the soldiers. Like just, it just went too fast. And I don't know if they were like, Oh, we can't cause it's Captain America. We got to make sure this movie is exciting as possible. We got to, we can't really have it like a, a good origin story. We can't really do that. Um, I don't know, but I feel like, that yeah. was a really interesting story right here. So, yeah. And anything else to say about Bucky? Uh, no, I agree. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll talk probably go back to Bucky a bit in the second one. But, yeah, for now, we'll just say, yeah, I, I agree with you. His death was definitely uh, rushed. Um, yeah. And also, yeah, kind of almost not that con- – I guess it's, like, kind of funny that he wasn't really killed by anything, like, that antagonistic. I mean, he was basically killed by a robot and then by a dodgy, a dodgy handrail, basically. I mean, uh, it wasn't, like, a moment where he was – I don't know. Also, I'm kind of surprised. This is a minor thing, but I'm kind of surprised that we didn't like see him get his. Obviously, this will come back later. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see him get his arm chopped off. Because you would think, like, I mean, that would be like a brutal thing, you know? Because like, uh, obviously, I mean, you could infer if you really wanted to, based on the fact we didn't technically see him die. You could be like, oh, well, maybe he's not dead. Um, but if, and obviously that's a problem because you want to believe these things, um, because mm-hmm. that's useful. You don't want a film that's constantly just faking you out with deaths and stuff. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, seeing as he obviously comes back with an arm, I don't. Know, do, do they ever explain why he has a metal arm? No, I don't. I don't think they do. So yeah, they could have had a scene where you know Red Skull, uh, or whatever. Obviously not Red Skull, but some kind of evil colonel or whatever, Nazi guy chops off his arm, or you know he te- hurts his arm some way. Um, and it's obviously you know I mean keep it PG guys, but obviously we see that he's lost his arm. It's clearly very violent, and then he's thrown aside like Star Wars style. Uh, and then we're like, wow, I guess he's probably dead, seeing as he lost his arm. I mean you know. A yeah. uh, bit more brutal, and that would have been cooler, but instead he just fell off a thing. Anyway, Agent Carter now. Yes. Well, so this love story was, I don't know, it was okay. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but like that scene where that girl kisses Captain America, it is just so forced and she's, cliche. She's from Game of Thrones. She is Natalie Dormer. Yeah. I know her. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, that didn't need to happen. And so their relationship after that breaks down. And when he does die, you know, it was a nice ending, you know, and he says when he's in New York, like, I had a date. Like, that was a nice yeah. line. <laughs> you made it sound so lovely. I had a date. <laughs> I had a date. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, I mean, it was okay, but like, just just don't give me that when he's kissing someone else and she spots him. It's just, it's just oh, all. Yeah, but Luke, we, we love our films to have pointless misunderstandings where the relationship's grown to a halt. This is what I don't. It's not a misunderstanding that he did kiss her. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, like, true. Yeah, not really a misunderstanding. I guess just like a. But I guess it was kind of like a misunderstanding because obviously she was. I mean, she was really you know egging him on. I think any woman would understand if she saw the context. Also, it's Natalie Dormer. I think that's what you should have said. That's what I would have said. <laughs> hey, Peggy, come on! It's Natalie Dormer. She's from Game of Thrones. I'd have said. Oh, uh, great stuff. So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what you want to do if you went back in time. You just want to just you know right game of thrones that, that actually was, i guess that's seen in family guy <laughs> when uh peter and brian are talking about when they go back in time to hate, we can write die hard yeah um yeah basically um but instead it would be game of thrones so everyone would accuse you of being a i don't know some kind of having a rape fetish so do you really do you really want that is that a price oh, that to, was a good fine price to pay the, oh, yeah. in the past yeah nobody cared about yeah. that shit 
Yeah. Brian Singer was still fucking making movies in 2018. <laughs> uh, did you ever see um, the thing? I don't know if I mentioned this to you yet, but obviously um, The Onion did an article about uh, Rami Malek. And it was like Rami Malek immersed himself in the role of somebody who didn't know anything about Brian Singer's countless rape accusations. Yeah. Anyway, so are we ready to conclude? Uh, just a couple of things. The Colonel character played by Tommy oh, Lee sorry, Jones. Yes. You shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just a stereotype or whatever. Yeah. I guess he has to be in there. Uh, also, the action. Yeah. It's, the action is shit. Like, oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. It, it, had a, good. it has my favorite, which is cutting on every single hit. That's a classic. The Hydra guys don't even fucking use their guns either. Oh, yeah. Also, I mean, I, I guess, like, I remember this was pointed out by Red Letter Media and that thing. Um, I, for some reason, it's the one thing that stuck with me from their review. They point out that, like, you would kind of be excited to see it be fought with, you know, conventional weapons from the past, but... Like a lot of them have laser weapons unnecessarily, so it kind of just looks like. I mean, that's what I was saying. You know, it would be cool to make the the weapons or the the fighting, the martial aspect of it feel a bit more authentic to the era with you know Tommy guns. They have yeah. those back in the day. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so I also wanted to say before we move on, um, filming for this movie took oh, place yeah, of course you mentioned that. in several locations. It took place in the northern quarter of Manchester. <gasps> so how about that followed, wow. by the, followed by the northern quarter of Milton Keynes <laughs> followed by the Stanley Dock area of, Li- uh, of Liverpool oh. both doubling for the period's lower east side of Manhattan which just shows how great Manchester and Liverpool are if you can take New York in the 1940s and say it's the equivalent to modern day Manchester and Liverpool wow that's some great yeah. stuff uh, but yeah no I reckon I thought I recognised the docks because uh, I've been there uh, a couple of times and recently as well from uh, when he's killing that Hydra guy. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, they do look familiar, and yeah, it's because they're in Liverpool. So just want to shout out the Northwest, you know. Uh, well done. Yeah, well done. You, yeah, uh, look a lot like 1940s New York City. See that lack of investment, really. Yeah. Kind of- so I think who you really need to thank is Margaret Thatcher. Oh uh, yeah. She well like, done, Margaret Thatcher. Her, you know, you, you'd, you'd look like some kind of uh, you'd be more like where they're shooting Wakanda. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, that's it. That's it. Uh, shall we conclude now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, you go first, Michael. I'll go first. Okay. So basically, I mean, a lot of what we said stands. Uh, so it's it's not a particularly fantastic film. It's also kind of. I mean, the thing is, it's not skippable because that bloody Bucky is just going to keep coming back in every single Captain America story. I never. <laughs> he's honestly, I just get so annoyed by him. He's like, he's one of those classic characters you just kind of just get annoyed with. Like when he showed up in the end credits of uh, of Black Panther. I honestly was just like, what is happening in my life? Anyway, um, so, uh, I mean, in, in a sense, like, like, I, I would say, yeah, it, it's skippable in that, like, I mean, he, Bucky, I mean, you're going to see plenty of him later on anyway, so you might as well avoid as much of him as you can. Uh, but, I mean, it's still it's still a competent film. There's still, like, a lot to like in it. It's just not that great. Um, and I actually am quite quite comfortable yes placing it exactly here uh between two films which are very different in a way which sometimes i do find myself doing um it's it's interesting if you want a number to it, it's a high five low six uh but it's and it's around films like you know minority report oceans 11 kind of you know predator like standard action films a bit officially where it is it's above spider-man 3 by one place and now spider-man 3 of course is not a good film but it's a film that is in many ways very enjoyable. And to be honest, if I had to choose between watching Spider-Man 3 again and watching this, I would choose Spider-Man 3. And in that sense, I could almost put Spider-Man 3 above this. But um, I mean, let's be real here, Luke. Um, but I'm also putting it just below A Quiet Place. Um, if you remember our A Quiet Place review, uh, I was a bit down on it because I didn't find it that scary. And I had too many kind of just problems with it. I found A Quiet Place have quite a few flaws. Um, in many ways, I think it's an interesting because A Quiet Place is an example of a film that has... Uh, a good ideas but then a lot of flaws in it whereas this is an example of a film which doesn't really have any glaring flaws it just misses a lot of marks so it's kind of just like an absence of what's there more than it's things that are actively wrong with it and i'd say that's kind of the definition for me of like a low six high five any something that's just competent but doesn't really bring anything to the table so yeah yeah uh yeah i basically agree uh like this movie there was nothing bad about it there was nothing like oh i can't believe they did this but they they just had a really had an interesting story uh, like we've discussed and they just missed it we could have had captain america uh you know become this propaganda model and then just have an existential crisis and then you know manage to turn it all around win the respect of the troops and prove to himself that yes he can be 
uh, a good soldier, and he's not just there to, uh, you know, look good in a silly costume. Uh, and unfortunately, that didn't really happen. Um, it could have been stretched out more. It could have been explored more. And yeah, the villain in this was awful. Uh, the definition of a one-dimensional villain. Uh, you can't get any more just bland than this guy. He's a really evil bad guy who wants to take over the world. I mean, I guess you can. What was that guy in Justice League called again? Uh, Steppenwolf. Yeah, Steppenwolf. It's a battle between them two as who's the worst villain. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, yeah. So next... No, I need to... A- I need to rank it. Oh, you haven't ranked it, have you? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, it's a decent movie. Uh, it's I'm going to say 6 out of 10. I just think yeah. I was really quite enjoying it up until the one minute. 10, 15 mark, whenever he, like, gets cheered by the soldiers. Like, up to that point, I was really enjoying it. I was thinking, yeah, well, this is better than I remember. But then, yeah, it all just went downhill after that. Yeah, uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I so think 6 out of 10. Actually, to be honest, I mean, maybe, maybe the compromise between... um. Uh, not watching it at all and watching it is if you are ever doing a marathon of the Marvel films, maybe watch just the first half of this film and kind of just be like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe. I mean, yeah. it's it's a small price to pay for not knowing who the Skull Man is when he shows up in Infinity oh, yeah. War. And uh, we need to talk about this. Like, uh, this is an issue with the movie. I was going to save it for my conclusion. I could have brought it up earlier, but this movie literally is it, it's called Captain America: The First Avenger. It sets up the Tesseract, which is used. Oh yeah, in yeah, Avengers. That's and I don't know if you saw the end credits for this movie. I it's did. Literally, it's literally an ad for the Avengers. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's just yeah they uh they maybe went too far with this one. In yeah. terms of just making you excited for the Avengers. Yeah, um, I think back in those days they kind of just weren't confident enough, so they were like, well, we gotta create some hype, yeah. I guess. They couldn't do like a Thor Ragnarok, could they? No, yeah, but I tell you what, I mean, that's why I don't think I just can't sit there through the credits because it's like. You sit there through the credits, and then you, you don't know what you're going to get. Whereas what you can do is just go home and just look up the end credits scene on YouTube. Just do that. Yeah, exactly. I don't even think that's illegal. <laughs> because, you know, 